Are you going to say to Lee Chin, Joe Canning, um, Paddy Deegan, Patrick Horgan, the stars of our game at the minute, totally dedicated and brilliant young men, are we going to say to them, you are now representing us? We, on one, in, in all Ireland, the GA heads come along and they say, oh, we have the greatest game in the world and the fastest game in the world and so on and so on. Are you not going to say to those players, but you know something, we're not going to give you the tools to actually reach your potential here. We're going to, we're going to pull a little bit back on this. And that's what I mean by the lack of context. Um, I, I think certainly it's something that needs to be looked at. And certainly, um, you know, being efficient with your money and all of that is hugely, hugely important. We've only another sports organisation to look at when things can go wrong and how difficult it is then to pull it back. <laughs> Yet. It took me a long time to get here. Both players have, have spoken really So UCC lads, the 40th um, Fitzgibbon Cup title last night and robbed Carlo, IT, who we're fans of here, Cheddar, I'm sure Brian too, being uh, neighbours and the underdog as well. Jerry Kelly had a, 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 a sideline, almost apparently the same place Mark Coleman stuck it over in the semi-final um, mm. to, to draw it. But I don't know, Cheddar, the Carlo threw this away. I don't know how much of it um, you saw, but they were six points up in the first, they went seven, five points up, four points up at half time, and then went to six in the second half after obviously scoring two early goals. Couldn't hold out. I know, I think they did leave it behind them all right, and look, that's pretty disappointing for them, Wooly. Um, I think they might have had maybe five league titles in the last maybe seven or eight or ten years, um, have been in two Fitz finals now. And look, look anybody. Um, who plays in them value them greatly yeah. and you know the chances of getting there they're, they're a very 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 small college uh, number one um, and I suppose why we support them um, you know I'm probably wearing two hats here there was a number of James Stevens players playing with them last night but there was also four East players playing with them and that has been the case and there was also Carlo players playing with them and if you look at like some Marty Kavanagh um, and some of the current Carlo panel came through that system there so it's, it's hugely beneficial to some of the counties here that may not be in the limelight the whole time um, and I know I really feel for DJ as well he's put a huge amount in, into them um, and just to come up short again um, you know must must be very very disappointing for him um, I, I, if I was just comment for a minute um, maybe on the game um, I think you know UCC probably just, just f- some high level comments on it they did raise their game 20 minutes from the end there was no doubt about that I think and they were man down for the last 10 but prior to that they were raising their game and I don't think that maybe Carlo reacted to it uh, strongly enough and they made a few I suppose um, poor decisions on the ball and uh, probably lost possession a little bit easy um, at that crucial time as well and spilled a couple of scores and probably maybe when they went the extra man up um, just maybe stayed going route one uh, you know rather than trying to spread that to defence and you know m- make the extra man count uh, but I know myself it's very very easy to talk about that in hindsight um, you know planning that and just getting it right on the, on the night in a big game like that is very very difficult so I feel for, for, the, for them they're obviously uh, the college that's closest to ourselves and closest to Kilkenny and that as well um, and I feel for DJ he's, he's done a lot there himself and Michael Dempsey um, and I suppose that's two finals that they have failed yeah. in this year Yeah, disappointing for them alright I suppose this is the thing Brian it's a weird one Kilkenny lose a man in the All-Ireland final and Tipperary make the most of it and beat them well then you have other examples of when Tipperary in the semi-final against Wexford and this one where you have teams who lose a man and raise their game I don't know how to analyse this it's just these, these things happen and it's unexplainable. Yeah, and look, first things first, it was a ridiculous sending off. Um, that that to me was not a, a sending off, and you'd feel for Niall O'Leary, um, and obviously he's very relieved to see the, the UCC boys pulling out of the fire from. But it was just their big hurlers really came to the fore, you know. Yeah. And they were quite enough for for large parts of it, but you know, Mark Coleman stepped up a, a level. Darfur Fitzgibbon with a wonder point to actually win it. You know, Shane Kingston had a fine hour totally and obviously Shane Conway was the, the main man all over and Paddy Lockin did a fine job on Jerry Kelly then as well so you know they just have massive players all over the field and, and they stood up when needed to be and I suppose the other side of it is Carlo just didn't score coming down the home stretches and it doesn't matter what game you're playing <laughs> you have to you have to keep the scoreboard ticking over and you know Chris Nolan had a, had a great game but you know he, he missed that chance he's probably kicking himself today because he'd usually nail that with his eyes closed you know he maybe could have carried it another couple of yards maybe Rushy shot, but you know that's not um, 
you know, putting you know putting it all on his shoulders. It was just a great opportunity to actually score it, and you know, so close then at the end. Like you know, it was a fair shot. There's a couple of different angles of that um, shot, and then the rolling. You know, he got top spin on. I think I think I could make out it was Paddy O'Loughlin somehow got the hurl with and deflected it up over the bar. So very unlucky for Carlo but as I said to me just the big players for UCC stood up on the counter and that's always the case when you have those big players if they stand up then they're going to make a big difference uh, UCC manager Tom Kingston he said that Shane Conway is the messy of hurling uh, Cheddar he mm. says no, he is, he is uh, and I, I know I know this to my cost and I know Brian does as well we yep. can speak highly about uh, Shane Conway but that's the um, great thing about the Fitzgibbon for players like Shane um, for Shane Conway do you know like that's the ones where he shines on a national level well, like that well, 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 I suppose that's the point I was making about Carlo IT. That's why you know we we, we support him so much. Um, Shane Conway was the only hurler outside of the top counties on the UCC team, and that's regularly the case. And yeah. d- ditto with uh, UL and LIT. Uh, the the chances of a uh, you know one of the players from uh, we'll just call them the development counties. I do categorise them as of getting on that team are very very slim. And it was something when I was involved with Leash, I always kept my eye on. I always regarded that as an indicator of progress in Leash hurling. How many players are actually on the team of Fitz given teams I think there was one stage there was nine leash players on it, and I thought that was great because we were coming from a low of one right. uh, but just two other little things Brian um, I thought were important um, I think Liam Blanchfield is playing really really good hurling this year and I'd be surprised if he doesn't break into the Kilkenny team and I think he was you know his loss was felt last night when he went off um, and I thought just towards the end there was a couple of handling errors that would be unlikely at this level because they are all inter-county hurlers um, and Carla got punished for them and obviously in a one point game these things matter Yeah no it definitely does yeah and just sorry I know you don't want to, to stay going about this all night but I just thought the last three was a little bit harsh as well Shane Kingston did brilliant to dispossess the full back coming out with the ball but the full back didn't even realise he, he didn't even realise he'd lost the ball Shane Kingston put himself in front of in front of the full back yeah. and next minute he just he caught his legs but there was no way there was intent there um, just thought it was one of those harsh ones it, it, it's one of those really close calls you know and you could see why Carol may be frustrated about it the sideline then at the end, you know, look, I said this last week on, on a tweet, I think, you know, Coleman's line ball last week for UCC to win it, that was a shot at nothing. There was no pressure on. A um, lot more difficult for Jerry Kelly to try and score that line ball. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be overly hard on him, you know, with missing it. The only thing I'll say is, I thought it was one of those opportunities where it was a great time to faint or work a short ball when everyone thought he was going to go for it. Did he I have time? There was, there was two or three little Carlo players actually had kind of made yeah. mini runs and I just think they could have worked it short and you know I think the ref would have given him an opportunity unless the ref had gone over to and spoke the last to poke of the game yeah. the last poke of it but I would have taken a chance you know what I mean it was one of those times where you could have fooled everyone into into working a score yeah you could you have know? stuck to free I think uh, Brian all right incidentally yeah. just Tom and Jerry Kelly um, you know it's an interesting uh, character and you know in terms of he's going to break into a tip team and that like he's I'm a showing, huge Jerry Kelly fan he's showing fair form for the type <laughs> of player that's hard to find yeah. it's difficult to find that type of abrasive player that has got incredible skills I mean some of his touches are unbelievable for the type of player that he is If it wasn't Tipperary full forward line he was trying to break onto he'd be walking onto a lot of county teams wouldn't well, he it's well, just well, Tipper uh, stacked uh, so heavily in the forwards well, That's what really backs up what we're saying here about hurling in terms of hurling going to the next level it's that strength and depth and look that explains it perfectly if Jerry Kelly cannot after considering his performances this year at college and at club level yeah. cannot break in or even get near he might yeah. not even get near a tip team Mully, that's no. the truth Any uh, county but, that's the form that gets you onto the county yeah, team absolutely. isn't but, it but it just tells you the strength and depth of these counties versus um, you know we'll talk Brian about Offaly and we'll talk myself about Leash and Carl and Westmead because we have very very good knowledge of them and look that's the issue and the other issue of course is you play so many games now you don't have a chance to rest players whereas the likes of Tipperary can call in Jerry Kelly and you might only get one game and he's a fantastic player. You know, you have that strength and depth is the real issue here. I think that's, that's stopping hurling from developing properly. Yeah, transfer system, lads. We'll take Jerry <laughs> Kelly and Leash. <laughs> <laughs> we might have the money for a bully. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably wouldn't. Speaking of money, right, so the GEA have plenty of money, lads. So their, their <laughs> revenues, uh, nice little segue there, Cheddar. Nice uh, 16% increase in revenues from 63.5 million to 73.9 million. So they released their annual uh, report 
um, here during the week. So it was a 22 percent increase in gate receipts. Now, the thing I want to concentrate on is what Tom Ryan was talking about, and that is intercounty uh, preparation costs. So he was complaining, despite this being a very good news story for the GEA, he did focus on the spiralling costs of inter-county teams. Now, whether that's fair or not, we'll get on to something, the G- their GPA statement in a little while. They released it late last night. But he's talking about the increase in preparing inter-county teams for the 32 counties came to 29.74 million. This was an increase in 11.6 over the previous year, a trend that simply cannot continue. So he's talking about potentially uh, putting spending caps um, on county teams. He says the solution may lie with rules and spending caps. I'm hesitant only because our track record with similar based rule enforcement around county teams is mixed. You're laughing, Cheddar. I'll come to you in a second. The solution has to start with a collective recognition that we take collective responsibility and start reversing the trend now. That's the important thing, reversing the trend now. How do you do that, Cheddar? How can you go back on the levels of preparation and the levels of um, expertise that are making the game such a success and are driving these revenues to levels we haven't seen before what would be the point in pulling pulling back or what what is being spent on county teams that could be you know could be reduced well, look I suppose it's, it's a long discussion first of all Willie you, 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 you know you could take two shows here and you're still probably scratching at the surface and I'll talk generally I suppose to start with I just find this is very disappointing with Tom's comment, to be honest with you. A complete lack of context here. Um, typical accountants speak, to be honest with you, but he's not an accountant anymore. He's the person that's leading our organisation. And I would have expected to see a context of vision of where the game is going to go and then maybe some comment like that. Um, and if we were to just look at, um, you know, how can you on one side say that you know we we have got the best game in the world pre- best prepared teams in the world um fastest game in the world and so on so on and now you're saying i'm going to hamstring the players yeah. by at playing at that level um and look you we might get into some details about well look what makes up the costs here um and in my experience you either you, you if you're going to save costs here you're going to shave some people who contribute an awful lot to the preparation of the teams and look we'll come back in a little bit more detail in this in a minute but I'll put this in context are you going to say to Lee Chin Joe Canning um, Paddy Deegan Patrick Horgan the stars of our game at the minute totally dedicated and brilliant young men are we going to say to them you are now representing us We on one in, in all Ireland the GA heads come along and they say oh, we have the greatest game in the world and the fastest game in the world and so on so on are you not going to say to those players but you know something we're not going to give you the tools to actually reach your potential here we're going to we're going to pull a little bit back on this and that's what I mean by the lack of context um, I, I think certainly it's something that needs to be looked at and certainly um, you know being efficient with your money and all of that is hugely hugely important we've only another sports organisation to look at when things can go wrong and how difficult it is then to pull it back uh, but I, I think we can talk a little bit more detail in in that in a minute, Willie, about you know where all of these these things are. I'm just really talking about the the, the vision of where the, the the GA is going, and this sort of you know it's a sort of a throwaway remark, which you know even in terms of setting rules, you set rules, and now you're going to come into disciplinary situations and all of those. Look, if you want to stop the, the, the this, just stop the payments. That'll stop it very very easy if that's what you want to do. Um, so I, I think. I, I just surprised by the lack of vision, the lack of context about these type of comments, and and you know, just it's just annoys people. I think, and I'm just surprised at it. Yeah, it 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 definitely true true. You know, maybe a, a cloud over what should have been a good news yes. day for the GEA. Um, there's no doubt about that. I I don't know, Brian. The GPA came out very very strongly last night, and they're very disappointed about it. And like, I mean, it does kind of paint the intercounty game as the enemy of the GEA yes. rather than rather than the jewel in the crown, as Paul Flynn called it, which it is because it completely bankrolls the GEA. The GEA would have it. I think it's to the tune of ninety percent of GEA revenues of the seventy two million is directly or indirectly. Uh, generated by intercounty players, and he's complaining about the, what they spend on preparation. Yeah, it's it's like almost, uh, you know, speaking of both, both sides of your mouth, almost like it, it's it's ridiculous. And look, you appreciate that the the level of costs are spiraling out of control. I, I understand that it's a runaway train, and they seem to have less and less 
grip on what's actually happening and there's a huge difference between you know the haves and the have nots and I appreciate and there's a lot of people getting paid that extortionate amounts of money but at the other side of it is without our inter-county game as you just said we wouldn't have uh, the, the same income generated or regenerated back into you know at the grassroots level um and, and, and the vast majority of that money is pumped back in. I think you have the figure there. Is it 84% or something like that? Yeah, that's the GEA have that. For every one uh, euro taken in, it reinvests 84 cents across yeah. the, the GEA. Like, so, that, so that's unbelievable. So we wouldn't have that regeneration of money. And it is obviously our flagship game. It's what gets us in national media. Um, you know, so it, it, it is disappointing. And you can understand the, the Gaelic Players Association, why they come out um, um, to give out about that situation but look I suppose from a general you know GA person's perspective they get a little bit annoyed with this because it just seems that the GA are deflecting away from what people cons- you know consider as the real issues at the moment you know the calendar the fixtures yeah um, they, they at the moment are the burning issues you know from a hurling perspective it's the threat of, of the sin bin and, and the black card like, like that's a massive issue and you know it's going to be decided by non-hurling people essentially people in suits and delegates and all that like these are real issues these are the issues on the ground that people are, are, are worried about and then you know, I suppose we, we see this sort of stuff being thrown out at the moment and it gets quite frustrating. I suppose it, it's, it mirrors what's going on in politics, I suppose. Yeah, so so Brian mentions Cheddar there about people being paid a lot of money. We know there's pay, payments to some managers, not all. Um, we know, like, what what are the big costs? Because when I look down through the costs of of inter-county players, the main ones, travel, we're not going to roll back on giving players travel expenses and the GPA fight hard to get them decent expenses. They're nowhere near to corporate expenses. They're fif- it's 55 cent a mile, which is, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's reasonable. That's the big one for a lot of counties. Catering is a really big one for every county now because m- players, because of the GPA, have meals after every training session and after every match. Are we going to turn around to players and say after driving home from work and heading back up for 12 o'clock that you're not being fed? No, you're not. Medical, the best doctors that you can get, physiotherapists, the best physio, masseurs. Are you going to tell inter-county players you can't have any of that? Sports gear, boots, all that thing that the GPA, uh, you know, fight hard for players to be looked after. What are you going to tell them they can't have that? Gym membership, you're not going to have that. It's nonsense. These things are increasing because the game's demanding it. Strength and conditioning managers are going to say, we can't afford that this year, lads. Sorry, you may go out there and we won't have that expertise. Yeah. Like, where is the game, where are the costs spiralling out of control that are not needed, Cheddar? Like, what could you pull back on? Well, Woolly, um, look, we'll talk about that in a second, but I'm not going to let the GPA off the hook here either, Woolly. Um, I think there, you know, a lot of the the media articles and responses from the GPA, GPA late, lately sound like union diktats from the sixties and seventies. To be honest with you, and I think it would serve them. Uh, look, county players aren't the only grouping in the GA here. Is that's that's you know. Uh, um, um, subscribing to the GA as a whole here and I think it would serve them an awful lot better if they were a little bit more inclusive and consider club players and club coaches and all of that as well I, I just when I saw the article this morning I said God almighty I thought I was looking at the Irish Independent from the 70s or something like that I think that, you that, see, they I, do only represent inter-county I know, players I, I know like there's a do. club union I, for the club players I, I, I know they do Woolly but that confrontational type of, of talk is has no place in modern society and being inclusive of everybody is important here. And I know they need to stand up, and I will be the first to, to support players I always have, even as a manager or as an analyst or whatever you want to call me. I'll be always that. But I think there needs to be a little bit of inclusiveness in, involved in that as well. And I'm not going to give the GP a free pass on this. The other question is obviously much more important, Willie. Um I don't know how we're going to shave costs here. Certainly, I have no intention um, of... There, there may be... Look, some little things have happened in the last couple of years. Panels have got bigger in the bigger counties because they simply can't afford to do that. Um, and some counties are running sub-panels now as development panels for the future for their team. And they're looking at the fall-off from now under 20. Uh, so a player maybe 21, 22. Bear in mind, TJ broke into the Kenny team at 25 years of age. If there wasn't the under-21 championship that he was playing in, would you have stayed around... Uh, you yeah. know, I, I, I know some top counties are looking at that at the minute so you may very well be running a panel now of 40 or 45 players at 55 cents a mile and so on and so on um, and I, I want to make one other comment there because I know you know I'm, I'm going to speak up here now in terms of county boards and that um, 
in in my view, I know there has been a some ca- some counties where there's been an issue about player playing paying players' expenses uh, because they simply didn't have the money to pay them. Um, but in my experience, that has been handled well to the extent that an awful lot of college players who may arrive in a car, tree to a car, or something like that, got you know got paid and, and county boards turned a blind eye to that because it's just simply recognised that these guys are giving an awful lot to their county and, and uh, you know so I want to talk up the positive of that as well now I want to talk about the other side Willie you know one of the things that sets the GA apart at the minute um, is the quality of the people that's working in it and I can guarantee you that there's an awful lot of businesses in Ireland would, would give their right or harm to have some of the county managers that's involved in teams managing their businesses um, and if you look at the quality of some of them and the innovations that they've brought to the game um, have been probably more than than even going back to any decade that I can remember and you know maybe we should be thanking some of these players some of these managers and I know most of them don't get paid will you regardless of all of the old media articles of that there are some there are there are also some on the club circuit more on the club circuit that I make would say. this a business yeah. but look if a club is foolish enough to chuck out money to them let them on um, you know if they're foolish enough to throw out that sort of money on, on a person that's on a merry-go-round well look we can't mind everybody here but I want to go back to the county uh, management I've, I've been asked a question actually recently I think there was three S&C coaches with a team with a county team I think it was an all Ireland team recently what do you need them for here's why you need them and you know, first of all, I'll, I'll just step back a little bit. Do you want success? Does your one county want success? And does your supporters want success? And you cannot speak out of both sides of your mouth here, because if it does, it's going to cost you some money here. And let's be really honest here. And I'm just talking about that particular point, and I'll just draw two examples. You may have a group of players, and bear in mind your panel changes every year. So but in year four or five, half your panel is probably gone, and you have a whole new cohort of players here. Some of them will need specific um, athletic ability, endurance, that sort of speed or ability uh, um, uh, coaching. There's more of a focus on that. Some of them will need speed and agility focus. Some of them will need strength focus. Now you put, you put into context why you need these qualified people doing that work. And I'll just draw another example, Willie. Like you, you will have um, qualified dietitians. The top people are working in GA. And when you look at, at some of them, um, you know, you look at Keen O'Neill, Pat Flanagan, Barry Soul, and all of these people, they are the top people in their areas, in their dis- disciplines, and they're working at the DGA. And I can tell you one thing, it's not for money because they'll get it anywhere else. Um, and the other point I want to make about those, sorry, I want to go back to that nutritionist and that dietitian side. They'd be on a consultancy basis, the nutritionist, rather than, they wouldn't be there every day. Like, no, you they know, wouldn't. You'd, you'd and, be paying and, them, the, and you they wouldn't, wouldn't be a big cost, And you would wouldn't they? have them anyway, because they don't work like that. They work in the background, one-to-one with players and all of that. But the point I want to make is this. On, in nutrition, and I prefer to call it a diet maybe ra- rather than nutrition, um, there's so many people out there spouting out things about this that know nothing about it. Um, you know, they're spoofers at the end of the day. And we had one recently where some some with somebody, I think with no qualifications, was spouting about the diet that they were going to have was going to cure cancer and all of this. Is Are they the type of people that we want to employ? Or do we want to employ the absolute quality people? Do our players deserve absolute quality? Because I think they do. And I can tell you for certain that the all of these people, you take a, you take a, a nutritionist or you take um, um, a, a physiotherapist. Sports psychologist. Their work, their actual day job is generally speaking done in the evening time. So if you want to get the best, you're going to have to get the best. This is their day job, most of them. The most of them are in private practice. So what do you do? Say, I'll get a second grader. How are you going to go down to to Paddy Deegan, who gives his heart and soul, Hern for Kenny, or Enda Rowland, who gives his heart and soul for every single team he's ever played for, and say, sorry, Enda, I'm going to give you a second grade tool to play or trade here. And I just put want to put that in context. The GA don't pay players, so we don't have the correct payment that currently other sports do. But we have a character being able to say to our players that we will give you the tools of the trade to be the best player you can be if that's what you want to decide to be. I will not want a GA ever to walk away from that. Yeah, that's fair enough. What do you think, Brian? Who do you think are the are the the costs that you were saying that getting ridiculous money or you know, like what what would you pull back yeah, on? Yeah, um, some sports psychology obviously is, is there's some big figures going there for sports psychology. Um, that but then then again that comes into what you're saying. Like if you want the best of your players, of course the mind training the mind is is hugely important. Yeah, the vast it's it's the difference between winning and losing. Um, if it is all the what time, a, not a, not some of the time, but it is big money. It's a big money business. Now, look, there's there's measures that have been tried before. You know, 
the training bands in November and December and what happens in those situations the managers still call training the players still have to turn up the players just don't get any expenses yeah you know but that could be policed yeah. better right so like if the players told the GPA oh, yeah. if the t- players told the GPA yeah. about that the GPA are a little bit more militant under Paul Flynn I think that you could probably police that a bit better probably but still not not to the extent the players are going to down tools you know what I mean they're still going to do whatever they're, they're told and if they're if they're asked to go back and we all, we all hear this you know teams going back earlier and earlier it, you, you know once upon a time it was January now it was December then it's November it's even October now at this stage you know most inter-county teams are meeting up and giving training programs and fitness and all that sort of thing so it just that that side of it is gone ridiculous the training how many nights a week do do teams meet up now you know, and that was one of the things when I was finishing up, and I, and I remember hearing comments. It just springs to mind when Brendan Brogdon was even, you know, you might be meeting up for a video analysis, and it could take an hour or two hours out of the evening, or lads have to drive to do a gym session. You know, things like this that could be done yeah. on other nights. So maybe a simple thing is, you know, three field sessions a week. You know, you know those sort of things. Like that is probably you know max. Like at the end of the day, we are amateur. We're not semi-professional. You know, we're, we're not professionals. Definitely not that. So, that. so that would cut down on some of the travel costs, for example, or you yeah, know, well, or like, maybe think, some you know, of the you, catering you hear costs. Figures between five and ten thousand of what a train session costs. Between yeah. by the time everything is taken into account, between expenses and, and meals and, and paying individuals to be there. So, like that, obviously, is, is a very. It's a simple thing. Will it actually happen on the ground? Probably not. Therein lies the problem, and that's what I think. In fairness to Tom Ryan, is what he is saying. He's very hesitant to try and bring in rules because they're they're broken. You know, you've tried and put spending caps um, on county boards. They're broken. You know, either you know players have to go fund money themselves, which we've known of the uh, county boards and players head on junkets over to America to raise money. Supporters club get involved. They give money. You know, so there's there's loads of ways that it can be cut around those sort of. You know, caps. So I suppose the yeah. onus is back on um, managers in particular, because um, I think they drive it more than uh, the county boards. Even you know, the county boards enable it, but it's the, it's the managers who dictate how often they train, when they train, and all the the, the avenues you know that Cheddar's talking about in terms of making their you know the the best of their players. Like, and I, I appreciate that's what in. On the on you know largely that's what managers that's what their their belief is. I'm trying to make my players better. Obviously, trying it's to not them. about making money, but at the same time, I suppose there has to be some sort of understanding that you know, like, is it really in the long run good for your players? I know you're enabling them to be the best they could possibly be and win all Ireland's and all that sort of thing. You're an ex player. We're all ex players. Like I'm kind of relieved I'm out of the inter county game and that you know the five six nights of the week like it's huge there's a huge amount of other things you could be doing in life and I don't mean going on the piss or anything like that I mean there's a hell of a lot more to life than GA as much as it's given me and as much as I've enjoyed it down through the years and I probably only see that now and that only comes with probably having you know seen other parts of life yeah no like I, I I'm trying to get to where we could potentially not spend as much Cheddar, look, my idea is the season's too long. And if you if the if the if the se- if the season was shortened, you're naturally gonna, you know, cut it by two thirds if you cut the season by two thirds. That's that's obvious. Mm-hmm. What about training camps? Are they necessary? Like could you do a training camp in a moor park for two days rather than go down the country? You know, and you're you could be saving twenty grand. Like are are there things that where they might be going a little bit overboard like a week away in Portugal for me that's way too you know but then it's probably counties that can afford that are doing it so it looks bad but if you can afford it why wouldn't you? But I think well it depends really where your team is Um, you know if you want to look at the specifics per team it depends on where your team is and what you need to do to get them over the line and what your expectations are Um, and and I just keep coming back to this Um, you know Brian makes a good point about sports psychologists do Kilkenny, Cork or Tipperary, now bear in mind Tipperary had three of them last year, do these counties need sports psychology when in their DNA and in their culture they're winning in all Ireland? Yeah. You know, I can say we're certain that, you Tip know... Tip had three of them. Well, they had a number of them can anyway. I, can I just right. come in there on that one as well? Like, I believe your, your coaching, your, your coaching staff, whether it's strength conditioning or whether it's your hurling coaches or your manager, 
like they have a huge part to play in terms of your psychology and the key messages being got across the players. Yeah, yeah, no, Brian, day but I, in, no, day out I, com- I completely understand that. But if somebody has an issue in their life that they don't want to talk to the management about, it's nice I, to I have somebody there yeah, to, to, that, to that's lend totally their ear. Different. That's a totally different thing, as you know. But like, is so that not coming under sports well, psychology well, 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 too? Well, well, I'll agree with, I'll disagree with both of you here, guys. <laughs> um, the sports psychologist's main job is to do in my view, Brian, is to do um, what you've just described, to keep an eye and coordinate on the um, cohesion between management and team and the word that's mm. getting across and how you look and how you behave and all of those things is hugely important in this highly competitive environment. Um, and they are important because for the simple reason, you know, some of our counties haven't played at that level and haven't have experienced at that. So so you do need some help here in preparing yourself, yeah, yeah, e- no, even I as a manager, you right. even need it. And Willie, yeah. you're right, the other issues are hugely important here as well. And look, one of the things that's that's really hurting young people at the minute, um, I suppose, is the lack of coping skills going through life and so on and so on. This is something that keeps coming back to me regularly in in, in speaking with players and that. Um, and certainly you need, there's no point in, in talking to somebody like that unless you have the right qualifications to speak about these things because you could be giving the wrong message completely to some of these players yeah. and I, I don't want to overplay sports psychology either because um, you know B- Brian is right in that sense it's the I suppose the sports psychology has got to be in the coaches and in the manager and in everybody here but it certainly helps greatly I think well you've made one point there um, and this is why and this is what annoys me a little bit about what Tom said um, I think there's a holistic approach to all of these and one of the key to it is keep going back to it is the games format and the number of games you've got to play and th- and you even take um, you even take you know some players played last night they're going to play again next Sunday they're training with two or three different teams now they probably aren't but they may very well be um, and you know it's all it's really goes back to that problem that sort of a, a championship format or the league format and the way and you know I made this point before we could certainly decrease the number of nights the county players would be needed to be, to be out if you were to involve them with the club a little bit more maybe earlier on in the season there's definitely an area there that I think could cure an awful lot of ills and could probably cure a lot of these the cause of a lot of these problems and the final point I'd make is this I'd rather ask, are we getting value for money here uh, from all these top class professionals? Yeah. And and when you look at it, generally speaking, they're just um, interacting with, uh, with 20 or 30 or 40 players in a county panel. They're never asked. Uh, I, I doubt it if they're ever asked. And I doubt it if county boards ha- have actually the knowledge of how to make this work anyway, to be honest with you. Um, are they ever asked to come in and oversee the conditioning program or the nutrition program or whatever their, whatever their discipline is within that county? And I think there could be an awful lot more value for money got from absolute experts. I mean, I've named some of them earlier on. Um, you know, some of these, these are all lecturers. They're not even SNC people. I'm just talking about them or I'm talking about nutritionists here. They're all top class people, dietitians. They're all top class people. Do we tap in to their knowledge base enough to be able to support the development in the county and so on and so on? No, we don't. So I think if we looked at that and got more value for money, maybe, and I, I go back to that point, I can say this, say this with certainty. Um, you know, and I and Brian, I do agree to, on this point. Some people are milking the system here, but that's a yeah. management issue. Yeah. It's not a policy issue. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You know, sorry, and because I think that's a very valid point, and I, I don't want to be saying that I'm not an advocate of sports psychology because I understand its importance, and that's what I'm saying. Probably, I've been involved in too many teams where it's just kind of uh, someone's brought in to give a talk every now and again and look you're not getting bang for your book there essentially you know and that's not what sports psychology is about I suppose is what I'm saying and some of these people have been brought in and quite a lot of money and the big names and that And but but it's not what sports psychology should have about and those key messages and you said the coherence between managers and you know and enabling players to be the best they can be so but it comes back to what you're saying you have to be getting the best quality and that comes back to managers and managers actually understanding it and really um, getting it the importance of this and not just throwing money at it or, or just getting in people for the sake of it Yeah I, that would that would worry me though Cheddar you're talking about Tipperary potentially or some of the big counties having more than one sports psychologist and then you'd, you'd have a county like Leash or you know even like uh, Carlo like any of these counties thinking we need them to be as successful and then they're trying to copy the counties that can afford it and this is where counties are starting to run into trouble and it's happening more in Gaelic football where Dublin have 
all this money they have all this expertise the full time strength and conditioning fella uh, Brian Cullen mm. now you see other counties trying to do that can they afford to do it Dublin have AIG money they have you know money that so much money that they can afford to do all this and then you're talking about other counties trying to copy that because that's what's successful without the money to afford it. So, mm. like, is there is there an argument to pool all sponsorship money so every county's getting a fair, you know, crack at a whip, or is that the, demotivating for I'm the saying, big? But this is why I'm saying, Willie, there's ways around that. Like, it it, it is it that it is to be fair, it is a runaway train. It's very very hard to police this. It's it's you the know? counties trying to keep up with the Joneses that are running yes, into problems. Of course. You know, you yeah. don't blame the Joneses because they can afford it better. Like without yeah. you. Yeah. I, I, I suppose. Look, my comment on that is always um, wrapped around the weakest. You know, no more than any society. You'll judge uh, your society by how well you're looking after your your weaker. So you've got. I'm just using Ender Rowland as the example here um, because he played last night and he's he's playing with. Um, a whole host of inter-county players who enjoy these um, and they're not benefits they're, to me they're just their needs um, in terms of an inter-county management um, and for example I'm only, I'm only using these now as examples and he sees the benefits of these and he, he's in the dressing room and probably in a house staying in the college or whatever, whatever the case may be and uh, you know he knows that these supports are in place in whatever counties they are you know, how is he motivated then to come back into leash if he thinks that the management team is not up to that level? And, I, and I'm assuming, and I'm in, in making that statement, I'm assuming that the management team is right. And Brian, you are right. Um, you know, a manager um, needs to know how these all work. Uh, it's not, a, and Willie, you're right in that sense as well. There's no, it's not keeping up with the Joneses here. If that was what it was, well, then you should stop it very, very quickly. You know, unless somebody has clear, specific roles and that they're really helpful to this team, well, then they're in the way, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think in, in looking at that, um, uh, and I think you need to look at uh, and it goes back to you know we always keep going back to this to the formats and how can we grow the game um, you know certainly the Offaly's the Leash the Westmeads the Carlos the Antrims you know those counties that have a chance stepping up at the minute need those supports and if for nothing else if for nothing else the key players in those counties if they're going to commit to the level that we want them to commit to you know, they need to be sort of assured that the right people are involved here and have a decent chance of success here. And if they haven't, you know, how, would you blame them for not committing if they don't? Yeah, well, like, I'll finish at this point and I'll throw it to the two of you. Well, we, I think we're all in agreement here, lads, that you want the best prepared team and that, you, like we're saying, he's talking out both sides of his mouth. He's proud of the product and how much money it generates, but he doesn't want to spend on it. It is a worry that the spend has increased 11% year on year. You know what I mean, uh, yes. Brian? While we all agree backroom teams are absolutely vital and you shouldn't be skimping on them if you can. But it's a big jump, like, you know, what? it's a huge jump year yeah, on like year. I, for me, if, if you were to ask me how you would solve that, obviously the, the calendar is crucial there. You know, reducing the the um, the, 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 the amount of months that the inter-county game is, is a product. Some way of, I, I, as I said, it's the, it's the two and three season month or pre a tr- three month pre season, um, it's the ratio of because that filters down the ratio of, of training to games from a player's perspective. It's absolutely, it's you know you have to be very 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 disciplined or you have to have that nugget of, of winning something to to constantly keep doing that year on year, um, and, and trying to and maybe the number of sessions that you meet. I think there are some maybe practical ways of trying to stop it I agree with in terms of the um, training camps going abroad I know you'll say if you have the money you should do it but I suppose that money is going out of the Irish economy as well there's a there's a wider thing on that like training camps are going back since the 50s like, you know I've read stories of, of Kerry footballers holding training camps down in Killarney back in the 1950s so like you know the benefits of training camps are, are, are quite obvious uh, and you can see why managers do it um they are, and, they, are, and, they are obvious, but they're kind of moving away from the amateur ethos of the GEA too because if you look at a, a player with a with a family and they don't get to see them all that much during the week because we know if you're not living but there, in Dublin... But there is, there's your, inter-county, your inter-county game in a nutshell is it's not really conducive to people that have young families. No, no, no. Oh, no it's, we, a, it's, a, it's a young man's game. We know that, but he, say anyone, any young fellow with a, a yeah. boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, way you, want to, whatever yeah. way you want to say it, they come home from work on a Friday after maybe doing a long commute all week and then they're getting onto a bus to go to a training camp and they're coming back on Sunday, have their weekend been spent like, you know, with professional kind of training and they haven't had any downtime in their week. Do you know what I mean? Like our our training camps moving away from the amateur ethos and the cost 
Do you know what I mean? Is are, are mm. they an issue, no matter where they are? Yeah, like, yeah, of course. Look, my last one, I swore I'd never go again. I, sp- I spent it <laughs> up in uh, Clendal Lock, a uh, kind of an army kind of boot. Oh, they're so, good. They're, I think I went on one of them back oh, in the man, late 90s. I, I enjoyed that. Sleep, <laughs> four hours sleep in two nights. And as you said, you're after spending all week working, you go do that for two nights and you come back and you have to go back into work on Monday and you get a flu out of it. Uh, great crack while you're doing it and persevering but by God when you're getting over 30 you don't want to go back and do another one yeah. of them See <laughs> Cheddar what do you think are training camps moved to prof- into a professional era where you could spend you know a full day in a moor park and not cost you not cost kind of anything uh, I, I I think most counties um, just get it right uh, Woolly I mean there's an awful lot of things uh, there's an awful lot of right things about what you said incidentally Woolly I was, I'm, I'm, what I'm more surprised is that you lasted a board camp but anyway <laughs> um, no I think most counties now do it locally and uh, you know they might have a half day or something like that and look they are very very it, again I, as I keep coming back to it, it it depends on context if your team is a new team you put together and you have a complete new management team you need to get to know people and you need to sit down and talk to people and listen to them and that and that's a really really great environment for that yeah. and it's a great environment for sort of setting goals and, and uh, players you know bear in mind they're coming from a club uh, you know in some places you know a fairly fraught club championship and you know a couple of months beforehand and you're expecting them to come in and bond perfectly with each other even though they may not see one another only on the training field so they're, they're valuable like that uh, Willie and uh, you know I've no doubt that Joe Kernan has said this a number of times that uh, the Armagh team probably wouldn't have won in All-Ireland in 2000 and whenever they won it True. 2002 without that trip and and therein I suppose sort of supports what I'm saying some teams needed to get over the line here um, I don't think I don't think it's it's a panacea for all ills no but it's very very good in, in terms of players getting to know each other and I think counties have managed it much better recently Right okay There was another just before you finish this I know I know you were talking about a tweet that was put out that if teams were um you know, less than four hours away or something He's like right, that. They yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, but I tell you one thing: you get out of a, of, off a mm. bus after four hours and try and play in the county game. I know, I know, no, like, I saw that. That just so to my read God, out, like to, like, you want sorry, to Brian, go, just, yeah, you just want to read to, it out, yeah. Just to read out the tweet, it was it was it was in relation to Do- Donegal coming down to play Mead and the overnight stay the night before cost the the, the county board ten grand. And the argument was you could have drove down that morning. And look, to be honest, I can see the point. It was John Harron who, who who used yeah. to play for Donegal made it. I can see where he's coming from, but like four hours, Christ, I completely agree with you. You're that's no preparation. Like I mean, what are you? You're throwing players out as lambs to the slaughter there. Yeah, like I get a league maybe like three hours max. You, you'd want to be travelling and a league because obviously it's not as important as championship. But even my God, trying to play a championship match after even two two, oh, two and a half hours to me is your max on a bus. You know, trying to go play a championship match. I think you're absolutely, you're, you're half dead after it. You know, it's you are people Brian, don't understand that. Uh, and maybe just for for the benefit of listeners at a, at inter county level, um, your preparation for that game probably takes place uh, two hours beforehand. So mm. you know, if the match is at two o'clock, you don't arrive into the pitch at five to two. You you more than likely arrive at the local hotel. You have your team chat, go through the tactics and all of that. Um, there's an hour, you know, in terms of uh, prehabbing for the game and all of that. Um, so it's not as if you just arrive down from Donegal and you arrive into Nan and Navin at quarter to two and throw the gear on and go out and play the game and go home again. Uh, you know, it's certainly gone on from there a little bit. And I just go back to the previous point on that. Um, certainly, some teams are looking at doubling up on that they might use that as their bonding exercise rather than going away in a camp or something like that yeah okay maybe yeah. maybe it's something like that Brian we're going to let you go we're finished with part one anyways I hear your bell ringing there again this is a regular <laughs> it's a regular occurrence we need we, to get Cheddar here earlier <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do yeah we, we, we'll, we'll, uh, we're, we'll be back in part two with Joey Holden because I spoke to him yesterday he was launching a new Avonmore Protein Gold so that interview's up next Joey, how's it going? Not too bad, no, not too bad. So, is your break over? Are you back in now after taking a little bit of time out? Yeah, we're back in, yes, yeah, so we're back in. So, we would have enjoyed a few days after the club I learned, but back into the, the grand scheme of things. Right. Now, yeah. So, how long did you take off? Because, like, I guess you won the All Ireland Club last year, so there's a lot of years rolling into each other. Yeah, um, I suppose it's difficult with my job, I'm a teacher, so you, you can only have a few days and you're back to work anyway. So, yeah. um, I suppose by the end of the week, you're nearly itching to get back nearly in anyway because you know what's coming. Right. You know, so you know the inter-county scene is starting to ramp up, so um, you're almost keen to get back into it yourself. Yeah, you would have been kind of due a holiday and a deserved holiday. Did you miss the holiday to Miami, the Kilkenny one? Yeah, we missed the Kilkenny holiday just with the club scene, yeah, so um, 
So you didn't take a holiday after winning the club all Ireland then? No, just with the teeth you're back into work, but hopefully get away a few days now during the midterm there and right. um, recharge the batteries and just yeah. get ready to go. Because that's important, I suppose, because uh, I know you came straight in again last year, but you ended up pulling your hamstring last year. That's that kind of danger of fatigue, isn't there? Yeah, that's the danger. I suppose last year was a bit more difficult because you're, you're, you're in March, you know, and then there was only a week or two almost to prove yourself with Kilkenny. Then we had the club scene, then you're back for a week in this championship, you know, so you can yeah. see that you'd be anxious to get back in yourself and prove that you're ready to start, you know, but it's a small timer frame or this is a bit of a bigger time frame, so you have a bit more time to leeway to, I suppose, get the body up to the inter-county standard because it's a big jump up from the club scene again to the fitness that you need for inter-county standards. So. Yeah. But it is important, to, I suppose, mentally as well to, to recharge and make sure you're ready to go because well, you don't want to peak now, you don't want to be running out of steam in May when the championship is really kicking in. You know? Well, that's the thing, I'm sure Brian would give you six weeks off if you wanted them, but then you, your chances of getting on the team, you Absolutely, know, missing yeah. that much. So yeah. it's nearly yourself, like you're saying, yourself that wants to get back in rather than being told to come back in. Yeah, I suppose your, your mindset is like, you, you know this is the intercounty scene, you know this is happening, so your mindset it is like, I'll have my few days, but I'll be ready to go again, like, and you have to kind of have that. Um, and I said, with work on that, it, it kind of just flows anyway, because when you have your midterm breaks and your summer holidays, you have the time during the day, I suppose, to, to relax and recharge the batteries. And if you have a two break day of training, you can go off for maybe a night away just to, to take that bit of break and bring that bit of freshness to it a bit. Like, yeah. You know. Was Henry stepping down a big shock or did you see it on the cards? No. I, and a few people have asked me that and I, I was kind of shocked by it or maybe a bit disappointed by it, but considering what, what he's done for us in yeah. the last two years, you know, but nobody really thought about it because of the situation we were in, it's just game on game and um, but I suppose when Henry took the job initially he said two or three years you know, I suppose he didn't expect the first two years to be so yeah. so full on and, and Henry's the character where he's either all in or he's not in at all, you know what I mean? So Because the trader row, trader row is on though, you know? Listen, just because you've done two it's always on but who knows but um, it's hard enough to get out with Kenny so you have to go back to the draw board and work on that but um, listen, he's, been, he's put everything into it um, he's five young kids there and he just wants maybe a summer just to spend time with them and, and enjoy his family life as well. Yeah. So. No, that's true. You didn't waste time replacing him, James O'Connor. Do you know anything about, about him? Well, yeah, it was just, it was, someone asked me there, James O'Connor was in and I was like, it was broke on the media before we were officially told, really? you know, yes, so, and the war goes around fast. Um, though we haven't met him yet, but this he had a great season with Father O'Neill's last yeah. year. So I suppose bring that bit of freshness as well, it'll be interesting. And, different ideas and maybe that will improve us again, hopefully it will. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a feeling that Kilkenny are back. Colin Fenley said after the, the club all Ireland, like, you know, not in so many words, I'm not going to quote him, that the idea that was we're in transition and the three clubs won the all Ireland and you had a good year last year. I think TJ might have alluded to it as well, you know, like, mm -hmm. there is that feeling that Kilkenny has come through a transi transition period and now you're back as one of the big hitters again. Yeah, I think... The, the Lee McCarthy Cup itself, there, there are so many teams that can win it, you know, and Kilkenny should always be competitive because like when you see the club scene, how hard it is and how competitive it is, and then to see the three club teams going on and win the club all Ireland this year, it's a, it's a phenomenal achievement. Um, so that, you'd imagine that should transition down into being seriously competitive inter-county standards. So, like we see the standard of players that we're playing against in the club scene, and it's them club lads that represent every inter-county scene, so there's no reason why we shouldn't be seriously competitive. And um, but. So at the same time, you have to go and prove that. It, it's easy to say we should be there, but you have to go and prove that. And there's so many teams that are so close together that who knows what way it can go, but we'll be there thereabouts, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose to, to, to announcing that you're back beating Limerick last year, that was a huge kind of statement from Kilkenny because not many were giving you a chance going into that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Limerick are a great team, like, and it was a phenomenal game. You know, it's a savage game, but um, it just goes to show maybe we're not as far away as people think, but. Again, this is a new season, who knows what way this is going to go, but you just have to get ready and prepare and get ready for every challenge that's thrown at you. Yeah. You've changed up your style a little bit in the last few years. Like, I mean, there's short puck outs going, coming out now, yeah. which would have been unheard tell of. Like, uh, you know, you're corner back and you're getting a short puck out. You know, do you want the puck out? Ah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you, you train for these sort of things. Yeah. Like, you know, you get ready for these sort of things. So. Um, it does put extra pressure on cornerbacks, though, right? It does, yeah. You know, you know that's, 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 it does, certainly does. But, you know, cornerbacks, there was much skill hurling as, as everyone else in training, so they should be ready for that. But it's interesting watching the, the classic GAs from years ago and how the game has evolved, you know. Yeah. When you watch them games, you can see how it's so different to the games that are around now as well. Yeah, no, it definitely is. So that, that's the thing, because a lot of teams now are almost setting traps for cornerbacks, right? So they'll drop off 
them and the Limerick especially do it and they'll drop off half a line and the minute the cornerback gets it suddenly you're being set upon absolutely know? yeah they almost wanted to give it to the cornerback so in, in the club scene that's something you'll say you'll kind of maybe identify the weaker lad and say give it to him or county centre is a bit more difficult most lads are comfortable on the ball but yeah you'd, you'd have a plan to say give that to the ball but then rush him make him panic and put him under pressure that he's hitting the ball where where you want to hit it rather than where he wants to hit it, you know. So yeah. I think that's a plan by a lot of I teams. I think uh, finding the balance between long ball game and a short ball game, Bally Hill seemed to have done it, you know, perfectly. Yeah. Kilkenny are, you know, getting there as well. Yeah, you have to have your, your men that are going to win the ball. The quicker you can get up the ball up to the forwards, they're they're the scoring machines, so they're the ones that you want to have on the ball in the scoring position. So if they can win the ball in the air, it's a great advantage to your yeah. team because you can have lads running off them and that sort of thing. Where. I suppose it, it takes longer to build up for a cornerback, but sometimes you need to do that in order to drag the other team up upon you and create more space up in the forward line. Well, that's the thing. If the other team are using a sweeper, you have a spare man, so you should be going. You should be using, going, it, yeah, using that. Yeah, yeah. That's again, exactly. it's it's not a one size fits all anymore. It's it's adapting to each team and yeah. different kind of strategies out, and that's what inter county throws up different kind of challenges. And, all and the time. Is, is that something that you know you talk about as a team, you know, in a team meeting before a game, lads, be sure of this, or is that something Brian would be taking control of? Ah, definitely, yeah, it's a mixture, you know, um, and and sometimes you have to take it on board on the field, you know, you have to, I suppose, you have to think your way through a game a lot more than than just getting the ball and getting rid of it, you know, you have to think your way through the game. But certainly, certain certain teams have different challenges and different ways they play and you'd be stupid to go out and say my the way I play is better than the way they play you know you have to adapt to certain situations yeah and even to continue on the cornerback team is like you're really good in the air and often full backs are very good in the air you're not getting that many opportunities to show that anymore because like especially against Limerick you're you're very rarely going to get one lumped down on you that's it Limerick. yeah you know you very rarely do but um, I suppose balls may, mightn't be as lumped down as much anymore anyway it's not the long way ball into the full forward as much anymore. Yeah, but yeah certainly they, they wouldn't come into the corner as much. They're more diagonal and in front of the corner forward. Which that's is, the thing. That's a different thing. So, like it. playing against Limerick, you're in, say, the left corner back position. Your man's breaking off into Paul Murphy's corner and his man is coming yeah. across the other way. So, like, it's a whole new, whole it's a, new yeah, world. It's a whole new, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. It's a whole different ball game altogether. Yeah. But where traditionally you'd be kind of sweeping around in front of a full back potentially, you know, for yeah, maybe a that's high it, ball. Yeah, you would have been, yeah. So, traditionally, would have been that. But I suppose I get a few high balls when I'm playing with Bally Hill and full back. You still get them for Bally Hill, still, yeah. So still a bit of wrestling there now and again. So. <laughs> you can't beat the old traditional no, wrestling. No, that's it, yeah. Come here, um, are you over the, the, the all Ireland final loss at this stage? Yeah, um, I suppose you don't get much of time to gather breath before you're back into the club scene. So, But I reflect on it yourself, you know, and Tipperary champions, and that's the bottom line, and you can look in and long and short. But, but um, I suppose the sending off was a big changing point that day, but... Um, Tipperary Warrior Champions and they have the they have the crown that we all want to take off now this year. Yeah, and do, would it take you long to, to stop thinking about I know obviously with Bally Hale starting it just changes your mind, but would you you know, would you dwell on things or would you ever watch it back? Um I suppose when you're a bit more experienced you tend not to dwell on them because um dwelling on them doesn't really help you too much, you know. You can just learn from these situations and see what you can do to improve the next time. But as I said, like Within a week, you're you're back to work and yeah. um, life goes on, and you're back to your club. Seeing then you want to do the best for them because your club depends on inner county lads to lead the way as well. So it doesn't take long before the next challenge is in front of you, and that's the the cruel part about it. Life goes on. You just can't dwell on these things. You have to just learn from them and keep going. Yeah, do, I'm sure the dressing room at halftime in the All Ireland final was mayhem after Richie just getting sent off. Mm. It was a great first half that you dominated the first part of it, and then Tip yeah. came back into it. And then Richie gets sent off. I'd say there was a lot of raised voices in the dressing room. Yeah, I suppose it's yeah um, to kind of manage that situation. It's something it's like it's something you don't prepare for. So um, it's something you wouldn't you wouldn't be prepared for. But just trying to manage the situation in the small time that you have at half time and make sure everyone's set. But it was always going to be an uphill struggle after that, and that's the way it turned out to be. So. Yeah, so you've different lads shouting, then you've other lads shouting at them to calm down and sit down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can be manic at times, but that's usually managed fairly well. Yeah, so what's, uh, just to finish up on your backroom team, Mick Dempsey obviously has gone, and Mick's, yeah. Mick's role maybe evolved a bit. He started off as a physical trainer, but did he end up doing a lot more than that? Absolutely, yeah, Mick was, Mick was phenomenally bocky Kenny a long way, you know, but, um, and he stepped away this year, and I think everyone in Kenny is thankful for the, all the hard work Mick put in, he's certainly a gentleman as well. Um, so we've new background team in there, so they'll bring a fresh voice and fresh mentality and we're back in there now and everyone seems to be enjoying it, you know, so 
um, they'll bring their ideas and try to bring us on to that next level and that's the challenge ahead of them as well. Yeah, so I suppose by the time you got into the Kilkenny squad, Mick knew a thing or two about hurling because oh, when absolutely. he went in first, I'm sure it was like, who's this lad? Uh, Footballer coming in here. Yeah, when I was in, now he knew he knew the ropes and he, <laughs> he was in charge, you know, of the, of the physical training, and he certainly pushed us hard and got us to the levels that we needed to be at that time. Yeah, because right, some some people are crediting him for the kind of ravenous work rate in the forwards. Do you know that kind of came from Tyrone potentially, and and I know Brian yeah. Cody has mentioned Tyrone before mm. that maybe Mick Dempsey had some influence on that as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and he, he would have always influenced that if he can turn the ball over there up there, it's it's going to seriously benefit on the backs and put forwards potentially getting scores because if you can put the back under pressure it's hitting them where our backs want to, want You're to be You're getting the high ball that you love. The high ball, the high floaty high ball in, like you know, that's what you want. Yeah. Um, but if that pressure is not on, they have time to pick out where they want to go. So he would have definitely been a driving force in, in setting that standard, you know, right. and, and keep maintaining that standard and even raising that standard year on year. Okay, and uh, finish up, what's DJ, what's his role? Forwards coach, I would imagine. Please tell me he's not doing anything outside of forwards coach. I know, definitely, yeah. I suppose skills as well, you know, like um, his, his drills are very good, you know, and, and using the ball very well. And I suppose forwards are very skillful, but I suppose nowadays, like you said, cornerbacks getting the ball, everybody needs to be skillful. So. In all the skills training that you do, you need to be pushing yourself and make sure it's at the high level. Right, and just on that, the skills training at senior inter county, because a lot of times you think when you make senior inter county, you have the skills, and yeah. maybe that's neglected a little bit. Would that be fair? I think it's something you need to work harder on because if you make a mistake in club senior, you might have that little bit of a time to drop a ball, a bit, bit of time to rise it back up, or it needs to be sharp. You know, if you lose that half a yard in the inter county scene, it's gone. You don't get it back. You know, it's gone. So. I think it needs to be constantly improved upon the whole time and make sure that's at a high level and even higher than in, than in the club scene because, as I said, you don't get that time when you come to Championship Intercounty. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, come here, best of luck against Wexford. I'm not going to ask you. I don't ask players about the match coming up anymore <laughs> yeah. because they don't like to talk about no. it. Thanks very much, Joey. You're welcome. Thanks very much. All right, predictions, Cheddar, I want to talk about... I don't know if to call this the big one of the weekend. Two years ago, this would be the big, huge game of the weekend, Cheddar, and I think Galway are rebuilding and they're trying to get some of their best players back. Canning's back, David Burke's coming back tra from training, and Dottie Burke is getting back in the mix again. And then you have Tipperary, who kind of are happy enough, you know, just to come out and try out a few players. So it doesn't have the feel of a Galway-Tipperary game that we'd be used to. That's true, Um I think, I think it's, it's sort of important for Galway and obviously for Shane and that as well to just to find form a fine team um, you know Liam knows his team probably 90% of it at this stage he knows form and all of that and he knows shape and yeah. all of those things about him he does need to find out a lot of things it'd be brilliant for him of course if he finds two or three players to put pressure on everybody else um, and here's an ideal opportunity for him to do that I think Shane's in a different uh, situation there it's just that you know we spoke of this before about the difficulty of getting to know your team and you know what motivates player and so on and so on and of course winning matches um, helps greatly with that because losing them that definitely doesn't help uh, you know uh, you, we, we know that so it's an important game I think uh, I'd make a different comment on that though Willie I think the reforming of the league structure really makes a mess of, of the competitive element to an extent you know I, I said last week and I do believe this nobody ever goes out to throw a match or, to, or, or anything like that that just simply doesn't happen happen um, but probably if you look at Tipperary, they've no pints at the minute. They were quite close. It's not that they're far away. They're not getting beaten or anything like that. And as I said, Liam is quite happy, I'd say, where he is. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, they're to play Westmead, um, no disrespect to Westmead, um, you'd expect Tipperary to beat him. So they know they're safe. There's no, yeah, there's no that's need the problem, for safety net here. Um, and, and equally on the other side, incidentally, on the other side, that Lee's Carlo match is really the crucial game here to stay up. It's it's hugely important to stay up here. I don't care whether you've been beaten by 10 or 15 pints, and that's not the case. But even if you were, you're going to learn a huge an awful lot more. Westmead, Cork are coming up to Westmead, for example, on Sunday. Um, you know, you'd expect the Westmead hurling people to come out and support their county against uh, Cork and that. And, and, you know, it has to rise the quali raise the quality of the standard within the county and that. So you think two, two things on that now, just to pull, pull you up on that, because I do accept your point and you make it regularly that it's vital, even if they're taking hammerings, Westmead are learning all the time, right? Would Leash have beaten Dublin last year if they didn't get momentum through the Joe McDonough Cup if they were like Carlo and had lost you know all their Leinster Championship games do you get me you, yes you, the, the benefit yes. No, the bene I, 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 you needn't go any further they would yes 
They would have beaten yes, Dublin. Yeah, right. preparation and, and all of that is just... But is confidence and momentum it, it, not it a big is. thing no, too? No, it absolutely is. Uh, but the one at John McDonough that they were expected to win, Leeds have beaten Westmead every single time. I don't think Westmead have ever beaten Leeds. Yeah. Um, so I just think the yeah. trade-off between... I get. I take your point of learnings. I think mm. the demoralisation that can come from uh, beat, losing all the time, does there, yeah. is there, there's a, a, a negative effect on I, that then I as think well. there can be, uh, Wooly, yes. And th- this is why I go back to that point. I think the... You know, why was the decision made to change the league? surely it didn't help Carlo I'm just using Carlo as an example who had a fantastic year last year um, who have gone to John McDonough now who wanted to stay in, the, in these divisions and play against these teams and you know staying in, in the division as they were in last year would have been very very competitive and would have helped them and even if they went down to John McDonough there was certainly a launch pad to come back up there again now it's going to be much much more difficult and look if the decision was made here to revamp this league because some Body looked at and said, well, every All-Ireland winner has come out of here. It must be easier to do that. Let's shove them all up to the top league and completely forget about Westmead. Bear in mind Westmead and our in John McDonough and they're up here in a very, very difficult uh, division. Desperate division. Desperate like, division. Yeah. Is that helpful? And I, I just scratched my head about the intelligence of some people looking about growing the game. If that's, you know, I go back to that thing about Tom again, about the vision for the game here. Um, it disappoints me greatly that there's not a better, better, more vision about, wh- you know, where the hur- whole hurling community is going to go. Yeah. I have no doubt that Liam Sheedy, um, Brian Cody, Shane O'Neill is with Galway now, even if he was in Limerick, I'd be saying the same thing. I have no doubt about it that every single one of them would stand up and say, in terms of priority, I want to see the game of hurling grow in my country. I have no doubt that they would say that, rather than the decision that was made here. And somebody just didn't have the backbone to be able to stand up and say, well, hold on a minute here now, we have a different vision for vision for hurling. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about Galway here then, because they've lost Joe Cooney and they lost Johnny Glynn. So, like, they're two huge players, literally. And uh, uh, Niall Burke hasn't figured under Shane O'Neill. I don't know if he's gone off the panel or if he's still there. So, literally, three of their main ball winners from puckouts, from Skehel's l- bombs, have gone. In turn, Skehel's not on the team now. He's trying out a new goalkeeper, uh, Murphy, and he's in goals and he's maybe trying a new puckout strategy. So, so like, I mean, they still have Cottle Mannion, Connor Whelan, and Joe Canning, which are three of the best players in the whole country but it's going to be interesting how to find the other three you know yeah. considering sh- uh, Connor Cooney's form is, has been hit and miss the last two years really since they won the All-Ireland um, they, they have a bit of rebuilding to do in, in that forward line uh, I suppose yes and that's why I you know, make the point that you know, winning matches and, and certainly not losing matches poorly with poor performances is hugely important for Shane at the minute. Yeah. Um, they lost badly enough to Limerick in the end, didn't they? Like, yeah, they were the, the, well they probably did. I'll tell you where the, where the disappointment in that really is, Willie. I mean, you know, when you look at the, you know, the, the, the players that you've mentioned, they are real ball winning players. Um, you know, when you look at the quality of Galway, All Ireland minor winning teams, and some of the players that were in those teams were phenomenal players, and to the extent that I would have been really looking forward to them developing as seniors and, and really entertaining everybody here in the way they could play. But for some reason or other, those type of players in Galway just don't seem to have come true. For whatever reason, it, it's difficult to say. And if you were, you know, I would always say that the strength of the, the development in your county and the strength of the underage product in your county will determine how successful you're going to be in future years. Well, probably Galway probably goes against my whole policy yeah, or my whole philosophy on that. What are they doing in Galway? Because you can see Waterford win an all Ireland minor and you can see that they clearly have five or six players and they all come yeah. through and now an under-21 All-Ireland team is built around him and they all come through to the senior team and they actually get to an All-Ireland final based on this injection of young players. Galway have won three in a row minors and there's yeah. not one talk about one player outside that I can see is Kilcommons who was one of yeah. the captains. He's gone in as a wing forward and I was asking a lad in work here what he's like. He's from Galway and he says, ah, he's not too bad. He, he, yeah. he carries the ball a bit too much. Like not, you know, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what to do with these young lads or how they can... Yeah, it's hard to put your finger on it to be honest with you and look it's it's up to Galway people anyway I'm just with enough to look at our own <laughs> and that. Uh, but I'd probably, just, I'd probably just compare that uh, I mean you know I've spoken before of a little bit of uh, I suppose experience of of um, a different culture in Kilkenny now and um, you know that type of culture of an expectation um, 
and support to players, you know, really fighting hard to get on a county team um, is a little bit different. And I wonder, is the club championship in Galway a little bit of, you know, be all and end all? And I wonder, is that club success? And this is just a, just me wondering now, I have no basis or no logic for saying this. Um, is that is the club championship um, and the fact that they get through regularly to all Ireland club finals because of the way they're set up in other words they're done for a provincial championship to play in and that does that actually work against their county team or is that a contributory factor I don't know a c- contributory factor I don't know but I, I, I'm certainly very surprised because I would go against every philosophy I would have about hurling that you know if your underage development is working really really well doing the right things and you can bring those players through surely you, you know and the laws of averages you must have a great chance of winning all Ireland and that really ha- hasn't happened for Galway they've won two in 30 or 40 years like it's phenomenal the amount of quality players they've put through and the amount of club All-Irelands they've been involved in and yet not uh, have won All-Irelands you know there, there surely is some so something to explain that yeah no there is what do you make of the like Shane Cooney's come in as centre centre back and he looks like a right good player um, we were talking about this on Monday's show I want to get your opinion on it he's trying to road McInerney at full back now Dahi Burke hasn't been around but there's some talking in in Galway, Dottie Burke plays midfield for the footballers in Corrafin, and there's some talk that he's trying this out McInerney full back, Cooney centre back to play Dotty Burke potentially in midfield. The lads on Monday, JJ and Michael Carton, said, Why would you move the greatest full back in the country out of his best position? I think Dottie Burke played centre back initially when he came onto the mm, county team. Right, like, yeah. he's more to him than just a full back. What's your take on this? Or, new managers sometimes like to put their own stamp on things. Um, it's not. I think well, it's not necessarily the wrong stamp. I spoke about this before. You know, Shane ha- obviously has a clear idea about the way he'd like Galway to play, and he would. Shane, you know, Shane's no fool. He's you know trained a team to um, to all Ireland club. You know, he's trained at a very 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 high level. Understands all of this very very well. He's certainly no fool, and I would think that he you know he has a clear way of the way that Galway. Um, should play based on his knowledge and he would have an in-depth knowledge about him all of the top managers will um, so he may very well look at uh, just the, the piece of the jigsaw that need to fit a little bit better for him in the way they play uh, and having said all of that um, you'd want to be fairly sure um, you know that something was going to work for you and move some of your players out of their best positions and without a doubt Dottie Burke has been probably one of the finest full backs I've seen and you know on his day and one of his days was belong to Kenny this year earlier on this summer um, he is he's imperious yeah. and, and you know he'll wipe the floor with anybody here um, so I, I, I'd say I'll put it I, I might put it in another way if you were to solve midfield and now create a problem at three that mightn't be a great idea uh, when you already have three solved yeah. um, but I'm, I, I suppose Shane this is why Shane this is why the league's important to him you know he needs to look at just move and just get a little edge here That's and freshen it yeah maybe yeah, freshen I mean, they're it they've been in all Ireland's uh, Woolley and semis and that for what four or five years now they're they're very very close here um, but they're going to have to find it just to go off to go off that they're going to have to find ball winning forwards though aren't they because because like we, uh, the criticism of Tipperary for years is that they've great skillful forwards, and mm. we know with the three we named out, they, they'll mm. get you to scores. Yeah. But who's your do- who's your workers with them? Who's your Joe Cooney's? Do you know? And who's it, your John? I, I think I think that depends only a little bit. I, I, you definitely need to have ball winners. You cannot have all just ball players in the forward line. Um, but you know, Shane may have a different way of playing. His game with Napierski was very much possession based, uh, rather than going long to the right. man and working off the breaks and that type of stuff. And I suspect that when you look at some of the better Galway minor players of the last 10 years, 15 years, some of them were that real real good first touch, you know, quick silver players. Um, and he may very well have looked at all of that and said, look, I, I actually have a fantastic panel here to play the way, I, the way I think Galway should play. And now it's a matter of getting all the parts of the jigsaw right. It may be something like that. I I'm, I'm, I'm don't know. I'm not privy to that. Incidentally, I, I from what I hear on the ground some of those players are back and they are back training Woolly, um, you know and they have plenty of time to get back I mean all of these Dahi and Joe are back yeah yeah. yeah and all of these players even if they were to you know they, they, they might do trips I can guarantee you they'll come back in in good shape and that you know certainly plenty good enough to, to, to you know with a couple of months conditioning that'll get back into shape again yeah they definitely will so like I mean where, where, how do you see this one going it is in Pierce Stadium this is the live game on TG Cahar. Um the, the, the funny thing about Tipperary is the last time they won the All-Ireland they went flying it in the league and everyone was talking them up in a mm. small way Liam Sheedy might be just happy enough let's just get through this lads the bigger picture last year's league quarter final they lost at home to Dublin so like I mean it yeah. really what's happening here has no bearing on the summer and if you can if, like you say if he can learn one thing 
he'd be nice to see Jerry Kelly getting back into the mix yeah. to see he could play 11 you, you don't know like I mean he'd like to learn one or two things without any pa- and it is a criticism of the league there's no pressure on Liam Sheedy losing matches <laughs> like I mean there's not Yeah, I, I think um, Liam would definitely love uh, you know any manager would love to do that but you know you know, don't move too far away from what has served Brian and Kilkenny well for 20 years um, and his every competition that he plays in is his flat to the mat every player every game is flat to the mat your performance is judged exactly as an All-Ireland might be the first round of the league and there's a lot to recommend that in terms of the standard of performance in the dressing room and the expectations of everybody and all of that. Sometimes when you let those things, you know, you don't intentionally go out and tell players that, but you may not actually um, put your team or you might play, you know, three or four starters or something like that. You know, your team is just simply a small little bit weaker in doing in doing that. And you might lose a couple of matches. And sometimes then it might be difficult to arrest the slide. Um, so I think, I think you know, Liam probably needs to be, you know, look, he will be. There's no better man to judge the mood here and to judge the mood the players and all of that know where they are um, and look if he has a Jerry Kelly coming in there or a Jake Morris or, or some of these players there's a there's a Noel McGrath's younger brother there to come in somewhere as well Brian McGrath um, you know they're you know, there's no better competition, as you know, Willie, in the dressing room than somebody's after grabbing your jersey. That that wakes you up very quickly. Yeah, no, it definitely does. You fancy Galway? Too? I know. I think I think Galway. Um, they just probably just have got to do with Imperial Stadium, obviously, as well. And I just fancy there's going to be not not between some of these games, to be honest with you. And and equally, you don't know what team is going to be out. You don't know what people are trying. You don't know if this is the first time they've tried something in their method of play. Yeah, um, and that's that, difficult you know, to analyse games. There's, there's a lot mean, of variables. Yeah. But I think I'd, I'd give it the the. Uh, you know, obviously a hesitant vote to Galway in this game. Yeah, Wexford Kilkenny is the other one. This is in Wexford Park. This is deferred coverage on TG Cahir. Um, you know, this is a big rivalry now, now Cheddar. Uh, no, this is a totally different game. Really. Yeah, no, um, there's, there, yeah. there's one thing that you can be sure of with the league. Galway and Kilkenny and Tipperary could be a game that re- is played at about 80% uh, intensity. Limerick play at 100, Wexter play at 100, Kilkenny play at 100. You can be guaranteed of those of those yes. three teams playing at 100 in the league, can't yeah. you? Yeah, there, there, there'll be nothing held back in Wexford Park. Um, there never is anyway. Um, and, you know, I'd certainly advise anybody within a, an ass's roar of Wexford Park, get in there if you like hurling, get in there and, and, and get this game. Um, I, I suppose when you look at it, um, you know, Davy has had a number of wins over Kilkenny, I think it's four or five in a row n- nearly at this stage. You know, some of them may not have been that, you know, you might even regard them as hugely important, but they are important because Brian does not take anything easy and Brian will want to go in there and, and, and play well. And you'll, you'll have a couple of other things as well. You'll have Fitzgibbon Cup players will, are starting to come back into the team now again, for, you know, probably three or four Kilkenny players playing last night, although I think Liam Blanchfield might be, might be out for Sunday. Um, and you will have probably the you know the club All Ireland winners from Ballahale and Tullerone coming back in there again. You know, so there's going to be competition for places in Kilkenny. Um, and look, you know, look at over the years. You know, you might get one or two chances of a Kilkenny jersey. That's the level of competition for places there. So you 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 know you're you're wearing a a nine or a three or a six or whatever it is with Kenny next Sunday you know you're in the shop window you perform if you don't Brian's going to find somebody else to, to perform that's just the dog eat dog situation that's there so Kenny, our Wexford at the minute is no different I think they have a number of players coming back as well and some big name players coming back as well on on, on Sunday so you know if you were already after getting getting two points for Wexford I know they lost the last match are you going to give up your jersey easy to Lee Chin or to Matthew O'Hanlon or to, to, to whoever um, so uh, that's going to be it's going to be that's going to be champion pace I think not not pace but certainly fervour and yeah, intensity, intensity and spirit levels. and all of those things but look at it, I, I've never seen a Kilkenny Wexford match any different Yeah so d- you're talking about Lee Chin uh, Dermot O'Keefe and Matthew O'Hanlon are all back so Davey was talking about them I'm confident they'll make the bench and be introduced during the course of the game I will monitor them monitor them in training this week but they will not have enough hurling behind them to start the game and I, I highlighted this here on my notes because something kind of jumped out to me when I was talking about and not having enough hurling done and I remember we both know Bruno McCormick he's better known in Port Leash as a footballer but he's mm. a very good hurler as well and I remember Tommy Fitzgerald who's in Eddie, Br- Eddie Brennan's backroom team obviously played with Leash saying to me Bruno just picked up a hurl one day before we were playing football training and he's striking it left and right and Tommy goes that's just disgusting mm. that lad can pick up a hurl and strike it as sweetly as that where it's, it, Tommy was saying his striking wasn't as good and he'd need you know to get back into it for a few months and different players obviously can just pick back up a hurl and do it whereas other hurler, hurlers need it a good while to get their striking back right is that wh- how, how no, does that, that dynamic that, work no, that would be the case um, and you know generally speaking to maybe the players 
that um, just mightn't have that absolute top drawer skill set um, then I've got to look at their athleticism and their strength and all of that they'll find another way let's put it that way to you and those type of players who we've spoken a number of times in the show are invaluable to the team but uh, you're, you're, you know you talk about these type of players um, look there's been a number of them over the time over the years they could have been just they would have excelled at any sport would they had all of uh, I suppose you'd need um, the conditioning people and in, and engineers and all of that to explain these things, but they had all of the right bits to be and to be good at any sport that they wanted to be. Look, look at DJ. I think DJ was a scratch golfer, um, and you know. So there's a lot of these. I mean, you look at Christy Ring. He was was he an All Ireland Championship and squash player. If he was, he wasn't too far away from it. Um, so there are a whole hand eye coordination and all of these things are on a completely different level to anybody else. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there are just simply exceptional elite athletes that would be brilliant at any sport that they play. Um, but I take the point, Woolley, as well, of what Davy is saying. Although you know, you can take him with Davy saying something um, in an article. He's doing like the that. opposite. Well, he's doing. <laughs> he has a reason for doing it. Is all I'll say about him. Um, but but um, at that level, um, the timing on the ball, Willie, as you know yourself, um, is much much less. At the, at the elite level of hurling, the real issue is lack of time to do things. And you know, this is where your your skill really comes in. It'll just buy you a second. That's all you really need. And if you look at the efficiency at the way TJ hurls and and uh, you know all of Joe Canning and all of those players the efficiency the way they hurl get a shot away really really quickly well you can take it if your touch is a little bit off and you fail to control it or you spill the ball a little bit too far away from your body it'll be taken off you straight away so touch and and quickness of movement and all of those is hugely important if you're a smidgen off at this level you're probably not going to perform to the level that you'd like to right okay here's one last question before we finish up is that this is the league this is um, you can experiment we know how Wexford are going to set up. They'll have Foley as an extra defender. Would Brian Cody be better off in the league play, picking one extra, playing a forward in the backs as a wing back? And that forward heads up and marks Foley. So you're going five backs on five forwards one se- side and there's seven on seven the other side. Granted, Kilkenny forwards will have seven so there won't be as much room. But yeah. drag one out a little bit. out. You know what I mean? You, there's ways or drop one into midfield and make sure he doesn't drop too far that his man won't follow him. And just give Wexford something to think about. I can't understand well, how... You, you definitely wouldn't shove somebody up, Willie. Um, for, for would no, no, but would that, not, would, would that not say, right, would Davy Fitz go, right, we're dictating everything here. We've practised this game plan yeah. every day. We're experts at this. Kilkenny aren't. We're going to drag Kilkenny into a game that we're better than them at. Why would Kilkenny not turn to, to tide on Davy and go, here's your sweeper. How about Mark and him? Now where are you mm. going? Now Davy's on the sideline going, geez, will I take off another forward and bring back another sweep? Do you know what I get? Like, he, yeah. like he's back scratching his head wondering what to do. And why don't you, you turn the tables onto these lads who are... No, you, uh, you, you definitely will turn the tables, will you? You, you, you won't do nothing. Um, but I guarantee you if you bring um, one of your... Um, You'd pick fo- a forward wing back, for example, yeah, and, and he'd it, go it, on it, up it, on Foley. It, yeah, and if you do and you leave yourself um, lack of numbers at the back... Um, you will give. You will concede freeze first of all, because the, the quickness and the precision that they're able to spin the ball into the right places to you will make it very difficult for your backs to play. Bear, you know, you mightn't score easily up the far end either, in the sense that you know there's an awful lot of players up there. It's a bit more clogged. It's yeah, clogged. But I can guarantee you. I mean, you put space. We've seen it in Croke Park enough times against fantastically Kenny defenders that when the space is put outside him like it was against Seamus Callan in, in, in an All-Ireland or it was with Patrick Horgan put the space outside and put the ball there and there's enough space that when he takes you on one to one with no covering defender there to, to screen him yeah. and there's only going to be one result you wouldn't do that but, uh, but you certainly would do a lot of other things uh, you certainly wouldn't uh, just waste your player and you know can you go 10-15 minutes and put long shooters on the field that take him out so so you don't put the ball down on top of him and you, you know instead of that you T- it's a 30 metre pass to a number of players in the middle third and he just turns around like Noel McGrath does for Tipperary and he slaps it over the bar you're going four or five pints up well now Davy has a problem does he shove the sweeper out a little bit further out the field or what does he do you know you, you do need to give him problems yeah. I absolutely agree with you on that uh, but, but leaving your man back in front of a, a man full forward line is kind of you know it's not taking the game it's not making Davy no, think it's doing exactly no, what Davy thinks you're going to do no I agree with that um, I, I think what you were looking at then is um, you're you probably will push push your player to midfield, and the minute they win the ball, he just simply Drop sprints in, back yeah. in front of the D. You know, yeah. you, you will have you will you certainly will have um, offensive. We don't ways see of enough of that, though. I don't probably think. don't know. And and um, you look, there probably is a little bit of cri- criticism of Kilkenny about handling that. Um, you know, so how do you handle that? Very very difficult because you got to coach it, Willie. You know, you can't just go in and draw up your whiteboard up in the dressing room and say, "Oh, 
uh, Wexford who were playing Wexford here now and uh, Kevin Foley's going to play a uh, sweeper and he's going to play that running game taking the ball out of the, the defence and uh, here's what we're going to do you know you need to rehearse it in the training field and all of that Yeah no that's true as well but I just think that it just it, it drives me mad that if Davy played a sweeper against you once and he caught you by surprise you'd say fair enough and then he does it again and he, he beats you with it again surely the third time you've got something to go with well, here I know you know that kind of way no, if, he, don't, he's he's doing got, it, if you don't go the first time you shouldn't be there he's doing it a long he's doing it a long time now and still yeah. tricking people with it unless yeah. he's no, changing his I, know, I, I think in fairness um I think in fairness, I, I think he's brought it to a whole new level. And it's, I, I don't see uh, the way, way Wex were playing now as an out-and-out -out sweeper, um, as we would have known it a couple of years ago, where he plays on the front of the D or in the mid of the D, um, and he attacks that diagonal ball going across the field. Um, and, and that he, he really is an extra attacking player now. And he's, the, he's, the, he's I suppose, he's a, that type of number 10 player rather than a sweeper was to come from soccer. Um, that, that, that number 10, that creative player coming up the field. And we saw that in the All-Ireland this year. The difficulty is that... Uh, at the right time when they really should have made use of that they just didn't and maybe they reverted back to type a little bit Woolly Wexford that day Yeah no exactly Leash and Clare is the other game that's deferred on TG Cahir so we might uh, we might have a look at that on Monday with the lads and we'll leave it there Cheddar because we're going way over time from the first section I won't get you a prediction I don't think we'll get predictions during the league is it or they're a waste of time it's like tossing a coin really isn't it uh, it, it is to an extent yeah. um, look you, you can say there's more uh, value in it in the championship oh, when we know exactly and, what's and the going league on championship. No, it, it is, look, the league championship is you know it's a league but it is cutthroat and Leinster yeah. or Munster I don't care you know Munster people I might, I might like to talk up Munster and look that's not there's nothing wrong with that that's their area but I'm going to tell you Leinster is going to be cutthroat yeah. and you know there, there's a couple of other things as well um, you know Dublin need to find some form against Carlo they're going out to Carlo on, on, to, to play on, on uh, against Carlo and like Carlo have a decent enough record at club level and at county level against Dublin but Dublin there's a couple of things here that you wouldn't just dismiss and I wouldn't dismiss that Dublin Dublin need to find a settled team they need to find form and they need to find a, a method of play I think um, and I think you know, it is important to them. Um, you know, I mean, they beat Leash by what was it seven the last time, but it was really four um, in their own patch uh, in Parnell, and like that's it. There, you know, it's hard to beat them there. So there are some teams that certainly it is very important to them, Willie, at the very least, to find some things about their team that they can build on to go into the actual uh, championship itself. Um, but I suppose because the the championship has now run on a league basis, people are maybe erroneously looking at it and saying they're two leagues. They're not. They're very very different. But I think the importance and the sort of cutthroat stuff that's in the league teams definitely go out to win but they may be trying out some things in going for that win and then that takes a little bit of there's too many variables then in terms of actually picking somebody yeah exactly and the game on air uh, sport on Saturday night is Waterford away to Limerick uh, I need to give that a mention and that's definitely going to be a test to see where Waterford are because Limerick take yes. no prisoners like in, in the league so you get more of a, an idea of where Waterford are again we'll have, we might have a chat about that um, on Monday right Cheddar that's it we'll, we'll talk um, to everybody on Monday 